the next part is is the desktop images. Um, if if we take a look at the and, and this really comes about how do we deliver these desktop images to our environment? So we look at the provisioning services overview uh, of this environment, and you can see you know the architecture drawing for this. Um, now we're we're delivering images not only to the desktops, but we're also delivering the images to uh, the Zen app servers. Um, and you can see each one has a write cache, but they have on the desktop groups. You can see different color to write caches because we have different virtual desktops. Uh, we have different virtual desktop images. Like I said in the beginning, there are five different ones, but they're all being delivered via provisioning services, uh, which is at the bottom layer. So for those of you who are not familiar with, with provisioning services, there's, there's essentially two types of images. Um, you have your private images and shared images. Now, the benefits of the private images, you know what, you get full read-write permissions, full customization, personalization of the environment, but it comes at cost, more storage required, harder support because each one is unique. You, you have to support each one individually. So if you have 20,000 images, that's 20,000 images you have to maintain. Hot fixes, service packs, antivirus updates, all that stuff. The shared image model, which you know people find very interesting and, and why they're looking more at the virtual desktop route, is because it's standardized. You can have greater control of the environment. It's cleaner. It's safer. But you, there's a potential that you could lose some personalization. Because this shared image is being shared, it's read-only. All of the changes that you make when you simply boot up a desktop are stored in a write cache file. And then we delete that. That gets deleted upon reboot of the virtual desktop. So you always get that clean desktop image every day. Um, you know, there are some things we can do, quite a few things we can do. Um, you know, within the Citrix products, plus with a lot of the Citrix partners that can add tons of personalization to the environment so users don't even know they're coming from a single image. Now, we look at the different types of desktop images, and you can see it broken down into five different images. And for the most part, they are identical. Uh, there's very little that's different between each one of these images. So you're thinking, why can't you get by with one? Honestly, we could have. Uh, there is no reason that we were able to identify during the design that we could not have gotten by with a single desktop image. But there were other reasons. So first one was business reasons. Um, the different high schools wanted to have, you know, the high schools, the middle schools, uh, just wanted to have different images for the different user groups, really to give themselves some future flexibility. Uh, there might be a case where they want to have applications installed on the desktop that's only used by teachers or school administrators and not available to students. So they thought, better have a separate desktop specifically for teachers and school administrators. We actually did know that some of the support staff had applications like that, uh, so they would need their own specific application set that we couldn't virtualize those. Uh, but essentially, there are business reasons, future flexibility. Uh, the other one, there was one that we, you know, we could have done. You know, it the, it's the Win 7 HSBP, so that's the Windows 7 High School Blade PC virtual desktop. We could have combined that with the Windows 7 High School desktop. It would have worked fine. Um, they had this thing called Common Image. Uh, but the reason why we did it is because the Windows 7 High School desktop would be on a hypervisor, would be on Hyper-V. The Windows 7 High School BP, the Blade PC, would be on the physical Blade PC device. We just decided to separate that out because of the hardware, the physical virtual considerations. You could combine them into two. It's possible. I've seen it done. It's called a, we call it a common image, that you have this single image that can be delivered to multiple different types of physical hardware. But for this particular use case, we just, you know, it was decided to let's just keep them separate to make it easier, uh, to make it easier uh, within the environment. The hardware we, we, we selected for, you know, we designed for the provisioning services aspect. Um, you can see the details there. I'm just going to pull out a couple of the more uh, interesting ones. Uh, first, the operating system. It's Windows 2008 64-bit. The big point here is 64-bit. 2008, 2003, I, I really don't care. What I care about is 64-bit because 64-bit is going to give us a lot better caching, which is going to help our environments considerably. Uh, we're estimating about 20 gigs of RAM for the provisioning services server, and then two 450 gigabyte drives in these devices. So it's a one new device. There's only there were only two disks that you could put in this. So we wanted to get some sizable disks uh, for this environment. And the reason why we had this size is because we wanted to use local storage for the V disks instead of a shared storage. Again, we're in a school district, not a lot of money, so we want to try to keep costs low, uh, as low as possible for this type of environment. So the RAM, you know, we get this question a lot. How did you figure out how much RAM you need for provisioning services? Well, it really comes down to cache. 
how much system, not not you know not dollars and cents, but it comes down to system cash. Uh, how much do we need to be able to optimize this environment? So we look at. So so what we figured out is that our virtual disk image is going to be like 20 gigs in size. But you're not going to send that 20 gig down to the virtual desktops. You're only going to send down what it requires. So we figured out that during a Windows 7 boot, just to get the log on screen, provisioning services will need to send about 200 megabytes of data. When the user logs on, that'll be an extra 50 megabytes of data. When the user runs, let's say, Office and other applications, that's about a gigabyte of data. So if we're delivering the application via application streaming, it's not going to have that much of an impact. But if it's an installed application, which in this case uh, Office was, it will have a large impact because it's part of that VDisk image and it's going to be delivered down. So we estimate that about a gig total uh, for the different types of applications that will be delivered down across the network. Probably not going to be that big, but it's a good estimate for now. And then finally, the user logs off, shuts down. That's about another 150 megabytes of data. So again, we, we, we take a look at this and we we, we kind of came up with a formula to try to figure out how much RAM we would need for the environment. So how much RAM you know, we need? We need about, let's just say, about 2 gig uh, for the OS, plus a gig just for the cache for the OS. And then we're going to add up the number of VDisks that we have. So we take that number, which is 5, times the, no, the amount of RAM, the average data, that we're going to read from a VDisk, which was in the previous slide. And that's, yeah, that's anywhere from 1.5 to 2 gig. So we'll, we'll estimate on the safe side here being 2 gig. Uh, so you figure this out. You know, this is going to be 3. This will be 10. So we end up with 13 gig. Now, I didn't include the ZenApp image. So that's a completely different image that we would have to add into this environment. And you know, as more people are going to be on the ZenApp servers. It's going to be delivering different things in the environment. So we would estimate, again, maybe maybe 4 to 6 gig on that. And that's how we got up to the 20 gig, uh, the, 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 the 20 gig of, as even for the environment. Now, and you know, this is all about cache. You know, this is all about system cache. And that's the critical thing when we're trying to figure out how much provisioning services RAM we need. We could have done PVS with 2 gigs of RAM or even 4 gigs of RAM. But then what would happen is every time I try to read a block of data from the VDisk, it would have to go to the physical disk on my server. Because we designed this with 20 gigs of RAM, all of those portions of the VDisk that are going to be used by most of the users, you know, the boot up sections, the logon sections, the sections of the, most, of the common applications, all that is going to be in cache, which is RAM. So that just means that accessing this data is going to be super fast and give the user a much better uh, experience within the environment. 